Hello everyone, welcome, welcome. My name's Charlie, and today I'm hopping back onto the island of Quinoa for my fifth month in Animal Crossing. I know, time flies. My main goals for this month were to finish another big build for the island, continue working on completing the museum, and get lucky, please, I beg. So yes, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Now the build idea I wanted to do for this month was a farm. I had a little bit of a farm going on already, but it was mostly just a place where my crops were kept in 3x3 squares, and I wanted it to be more immersive and integrated into the island. I still had a lot more items to collect before I could start building though, so I got myself all dressed up and headed to Poppy's house for her birthday. This was the second party I'd ever been to, and it was so adorable. Once I'd given her the very special birthday orange I'd picked, I just sort of sat on the couch and watched her and Bill as they partied it up. It was so cute! I didn't know exactly what kind of stuff I needed for the build, so I decided to collect money from trees and sell a bunch of my crops and bugs and such in an attempt to save up. Unfortunately, this plan was almost immediately foiled by my discovery of this item, the castle gate. What would I use this for? I don't know. Was it worth 160,000 bells? Maybe not, but it was just so magnificent. I could not resist, so I crafted a bunch of hot items to raise up the funds. And look at this thing! It's so cool and majestic, and not only that, but I can customize it into all these fun colors, which is honestly just incredible. Looking through the customization options, I did get some ideas for builds to use it in, but for now I just hid it behind this cliff for storage. Something else that I really wanted to prioritize this month was befriending all my good villagers and purging all the bad ones. I spent a lot of time that day handing out peaches to everyone, and I actually got a stovetop espresso maker from Bill, which seemed like it might fit into Marshall's coffee shop, so not bad. For some reason, there was some kind of fireworks show happening on day 4. I still don't know why, I guess just for fun. Just Tom Nook blowing my bells on useless things probably. Classic. However, I could not even stay mad because this fireworks show featured custom fireworks, meaning yours truly has full creative control over the designs that are blasted up into the night sky. Okay, here's my idea. The quinoa flag, because everything starts with quinoa, followed by the fairy circle, because uh, we are in a circle together. But if said community melts into a puddle, uh, follow my footsteps and everybody will follow you. And together we will sing songs and scream. Yeah, that's a narrative. That's good. After setting down my lovely espresso maker, I returned to the island that night for the main event. It was actually really, really cute. Still have no idea what the purpose is, but Julia gave me a sparkler and it just warmed my heart. I loved it so much. Nothing brought me quite as much joy though as seeing my work blasted into the sky. It was so beautiful. I think it really brought the citizens of Quinoa closer together, and I'm just proud to be the catalyst for that. Truly amazing. When I awoke the next day, I realized that for some reason I had like 11 fossils just sitting in my inventory, so I headed over to the museum and got them assessed by Blathers, and miraculously, I finished up the fossil exhibit. So that's one goal down. As a reward, Blathers gave me this super cool fossil poster, but you know, the real reward is getting to see my life's work displayed in the museum for all to enjoy. That's the real goal gift here. I do have one grievance though if Nintendo or Blathers is listening to this. Why do I have to keep getting my fossils assessed by him in order to sell them? Like wouldn't it make more sense if after I found them all I could use my collection as a guide and just assess them myself or just know what they are? It's just so much work to go all the way up there just to go all the way back down to sell them. And I know that's poor city planning and that's on me but ugh. It's so annoying. That afternoon, I visited Harv's Island and was incredibly surprised to see that Tortimer now had an acorn for a head and was calling himself Cornimer. Is this like, did the real Tortimer get kidnapped or is he doing a fun bit or is he just like old and kind of losing it? He gave me some nuts like it was Halloween or something and it was overall just a confusing experience. However, it was not the most confusing experience of the day because I also purchased this thing from Timmy and Tommy. Why do they carry this? One of my biggest long-term goals for Quinoa is to collect every single fruit hat and I actually ended up purchasing a kiwi hat to add to my collection as well as this cute grape harvest 
basket for my cursed grape outfit. It really just brought it up a notch. Not that it needed to be brought up a notch, that is, it's all the way up there. Now that I'd finished the museum fossil collection, I started to work on the bug and fish collections, which were substantially more difficult. I was missing a bunch of fish, but I actually had a decent amount of bugs caught. The thing that sucks though is that they're seasonal, so I kind of just have to wait for the times that they come out, which is a bit impossible. I may have to leave that as the last thing for us to do on Quinoa because I'm simply not going to be waiting until next summer for the single beetle I missed if the rest of the island is completely done. You feel? On a much better note, I purchased this. I laughed about this for like an hour straight and just terrorized Alan Boots. It also gave me, I mean, uh, Timmy. A great idea for a nice community event that we could put together for that evening. I swear it wasn't me. Look at this guy. Look at this dude. Look in his eyes. He would. Because we were now starting the transition into fall, I wanted to change up the paths a little bit. So I replaced them with these cute little dirt mushroom ones. They were cute, but the design of the path edges and the mushrooms in the middle just tiled a bit too much and it looked really unnatural, so that was a problem to fix later. A fun Animal Crossing fact about me is that as a kid, I loved the coelacanth. Granted, I called it coelacanth until I saw an exhibit at the Smithsonian and realized I've been saying it wrong for 12 years. But something about the coelacanth just makes me feel tingly and happy inside, so seeing as it started raining on day 10, I decided to give it a shot and try to get one. I fished until it stopped raining with no luck, but the next day, it rained even harder. If ever there was perfect coelacanth catching weather, this was it. This was the day. I could feel it my fisherman's bones. I purchased an absurd amount of fishing rods, too many fishing rods, like actually way too many. I got like six. For hours, I fished, wind in my hair, the sea on my face, but all I could catch were sea bass. And then I reeled in the biggest prize of all. Wait. <gasps> yes, Boots would finally be out of my hair. After five whole months, he would be leaving. I must say, it was bittersweet. He was the only villager left that had initially moved on to Quinoa with me, and it was only made worse when he gave me this incredibly confusing parting gift. Sorry? But it had to be done. We had better villagers on the horizon, and he had greatly overstayed his welcome, let's be real. Although I didn't catch a coelacanth, I did get a substantial amount of bells for all the fish I caught and used them to chip away at my house loan. And speaking of my house, I had made a very significant discovery with the help of some lovely people in the comments. You can put gyroids on the walls. Yeah, they go on little shelves and everything. So although I thought we were done with the creepy gyroid room, there was still much work to be done. I need to get back on that. But we had bigger fish fish to fry, and now that Boots was shipping off Quinoa, our next target for removal was gonna be Al, who apparently I've never talked to before. Hasn't this guy been here since like the first episode over five months ago? Like, good lord. After selling a bunch of fruit, I finally paid off my loan, fully upgrading my house and getting a basement. I was extremely happy about this until I saw the cost of the basement. Um, 2.5 million bells? Millions. Just when you think you're free. My disappointment is immeasurable. However, I didn't have much time to think about my lack of freedom because Boots had moved out the next day, which meant it was time to go on yet another villager hunt. I visited a lot of different villagers on a lot of different islands, but unfortunately none of them were lucky and I didn't really feel like grinding for more nook miles, so I just accepted my defeat and turned my attention to grander island planning. I have a bit of a vision for the final version of Quinoa, and part of that vision is having a cute little charming city area as well as a bit of a shopping district. I'd found these new brick paths after searching through a bunch of designs, and it matched my vision absolutely perfectly, so I started the grind of placing them all down. I also found these really beautiful grassy flower paths, and I do have an idea for a build to do for Poppy, and let me just say, these paths fit perfectly. When I woke up on day 14, the first thing on my mind was who had auto-filled into Boots' house, and yeah, not too hot. 
It's literally Eloise. It has the same floating hair thing. My disappointment is indescribable, but I numb the pain by spending the next couple hours placing down more paths, and I'm pretty pleased with how the different areas were coming out. The fish and bug collecting was not going well though, I won't lie. So I started to work on collecting the art from Red once again, even though it's pretty much just as slow and tedious. I'd at least gotten one new painting that day, but my art gallery is essentially empty. I just really don't know how I'm gonna fill the whole thing. It's gonna take ages. As is on brand, I opted to numb the pain of this realization with hours of path laying, and I got a substantial amount placed down near the town hall, as well as in the museum area. I had big plans for where these paths would go, and it takes forever to get rid of the old paths and put new ones down, so I was trying to chip away at it whenever I had free time. My main inspiration for the design was those classic small towns with the brick roads and cute shops that look kind of like these ones. Instead of having them just be separate things that sit there, it's more like a real town where there's little stands on the roads, stuff going on, and these shops and buildings just happen to be there. One fun thing that broke up all the monotonous tasks was that Halloween was coming up. Not only had I received a letter in the mail from Jack, but there were also adorable little Halloween decorations being sold in Nook's Cranny, and you know I just had to buy some. But by far, the most exciting part for me was choosing a costume. I didn't really have any good costumes in my wardrobe, so I headed to Able Sisters and got this like, Legend of Zelda outfit. It wasn't my costume of choice, just a backup if I didn't find anything better. After so much time placing the brick paths, I started to get a bit bored of them and began to lay down some of these like stone dirt paths too. I thought they paired pretty well. The problem though is that the way I placed them in my design portal messed up like my entire town and I couldn't just swap them because I'd already placed a ton down before I realized so I just had to painstakingly remove them all and replace them correctly. The amount of hours I spent on these paths cannot be properly conveyed. It was a big task but not as big as this rockhead statue. Wow. Look at this thing. I was happy it was a fake so I could steal it for personal decoration. When I was fishing the next day, I saw that our lovely Julia was thinking of moving out, and although I was sad, I am so glad that she did, because guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? If you don't already know what, watch the video that pops up in the corner, don't want any spoilers. We finally got lucky. I went on a whole big villager hunt, there's a video I posted of it that is so much fun, but I was just absolutely ecstatic. For some reason, this was the outfit I chose to greet Lucky for the first time on Quinoa. I also just had to purchase all the color variations of these creepy eye things. They're like my favorite accessory in the game. I slapped on the yellow pair and then headed over to Lucky's house for the first time. And it was definitely a vibe. I wasn't exactly sure what the theme was just from the walls and flooring, it just kind of looked like dirt, but I'd have to check back again later. Of course, I also had to take some photos just to commemorate the moment, and I mean, they came out great. Oh. Oh, wow. We'll fix this. We'll fix this. <laughs> now that we'd gotten lucky, our next priority was to decorate the island so he'd fall in love with Quinoa and want to stay on it forever. The first step was to add a little bridge right here from Nooks to the left side of the island, which looked way better than the little land one that was there before. I also bought this teeny tiny little treats basket because it just captured my heart. It really helped me keep in the Halloween spirit. It was at this time that I also learned giving villagers clothing items that they liked was a way better way to increase their friendship. So I went out on a bit of a shopping spree and got a bunch of stuff to hand out to people. Not only did giving out clothes increase friendship, but they all looked so cute in their new outfits and I just found it really fun to shop for everyone. I had a chunk of free time on day 19, so I spent a couple hours on pathing once again and ended up completely finishing the pass for the shopping district. Now it's like a blank canvas and all I have to do is clutter it up a tad and add items and such, which I am very excited for. The first little design I did this for was an outdoor flower shop, and I basically just used the grassy path, some cobblestone, and a flower wagon to start it off. Even though it was simple, I really loved it, and I thought it added a lot to the area already. By day 20, I'd collected all the items I needed for the farm build, so the time had come to create the beautiful quinoa farm. After customizing a bunch of my items and ordering the last of the stuff I needed, I spent a whole afternoon building the cutest dang Animal Crossing farm I've ever seen. I posted a whole video on the more specific building process for it, but essentially it's a little duck farm and I'm gonna have a farmer's market on the right side of it as well as a creamery on the left that heads up to where the museum is. This is seriously my favorite build I've done on Quinoa yet, and I run through this area all the time just to look at it and be happy on my little farm. I was super inspired that day, so I also built this little apple cider stand that I'd been thinking about for a while. I really love this build too, and I think it's just a cool, cute way to naturally blend the different parts of the island together. 
One aspect of quinoa I really wanted to work on was the transportation flow, so I began adding more bridges and inclines to areas that were kind of inaccessible, like this spot next to the museum. The thing about bridges and inclines, though, is that they're very, very expensive. And for the first time in my life, I stooped down to trying the stock market. I've said it before, I've never done the whole turnip thing, let alone successfully, but I really went all in. I bought 210 of them with all the bells I had, and then farmed the money rock, sold a bunch of bugs, and and purchased 190 more. I was a bit impatient though, so I ended up just selling a bunch of the day's hot items and finishing up the first incline. The turnips can finance the other ones I'll be placing, it'll be fine. The next day, I was incredibly disappointed to see that somebody had posted a disgusting and disrespectful notice on the bulletin board, so I made sure to take it down before doing my daily Halloween costume check at the Abel Sisters. And that day, I struck gold. I'd found the perfect costume. This Halloween, I'd be Doug Dimmodome, owner of the Dimsdale Dimmodome. I got the little jumpsuit, I ordered some cowboy boots, and everything was just going so smoothly. Once I'd set down the next staircase by the museum, I went and checked the turnip prices for the day. They were at 118 bells per turnip, and I bought them for 100 bells each, so I figured I could do way better than that. Like, I've seen turnip prices in the 300 range, there would definitely be a day when I could turn more of a profit. Until that day arrived though, my priority was to keep working on the paths and area designs for the island. I cleaned up outside the museum and placed down the brick designs, extended the path all the way from the Able Sisters to Marshall's Coffee Shop, and I also worked on placing and adjusting the paths around the farmer's market area by my house. Things on Quinoa were going great, and we'd actually made it to a 4 star rating already, which really made me excited about the direction of the island. This excitement was immediately robbed from me though when I checked the turnip prices the next day. 62 bells per turnip. Never in my wildest dreams did I think it'd go that low. I didn't even know what to do. I didn't want to panic though, I had to keep my composure, so I just sold a bunch of bugs to pay off the second incline and figured I'd check the turnip prices the next day. It could really only go up from there, right? Uh, no. Wrong. They were now at a cheeky 61 bells per turnip. It had somehow managed to get even just the slightest bit worse. I mean, my stairs were already finished, so I just had probably one or two more projects to go, but still. Just when I thought life couldn't get any worse, it really tanked to rock bottom. Are you kidding me? Lucky! These are not the kind of people we fraternize with! I am so disappointed in you, young man. I cannot believe this! Out of everybody, everybody. You could have hung out with Tammy and I wouldn't have given a freaking heck. It's okay, it's okay. Just gotta numb the pain by mindlessly decorating for hours at a time. But Al needs to be removed. It's gone too far. After placing down my next incline, I decided to tackle decorating the area behind the museum. I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to put there yet, but I wanted to have a bit more of an empty canvas. So I placed the Dunklesaurus and my big head statue on the rocks by the beach, and I actually really like them there. I think I might try to make this area of the beach part of the museum. That might turn out really cool. With that area completely cleared out now though, I placed down the brick pass and finished preparing it for decoration. The next day was our last day for the month, and fittingly, it just so happened to be Al's birthday. It's like the game knows. It's trying to irk me. You know what was even more wonderful? My turnips were completely rotten now. Apparently they rot at the end of the week that you buy them. I did not know that. So yeah, my investment down the drain, and history repeats itself as turnips are again only used as a way for me to catch ants and flies for the museum. I don't know why I never learn. I also found this fossil that literally looked like a pile of poop. Or like a chocolate cluster. I don't really like chocolate, so to me this could honestly be a chocolate turtle and I wouldn't know. To finish off for the day, I purchased some of these street lamps and customized them to look like they had little flower baskets hanging off them. They were really the perfect street lamp to match with the brick path, so I was incredibly excited to have found them. And in honor of Al's birthday, the last thing I did was place down this trash can because it reminds me so much of him. Overall, this was a really productive month for us on Quinoa. Not only did we finish the fossil exhibit, work on my absolute favorite build for the island, and lay down practically all the paths for the shopping district, but we also found Lucky, which has sincerely been my number one goal since the first day. I could not be more pleased, and I can't wait to show you the builds I've been planning, find the rest of my dreamies, and continue working toward the full completion of Quinoa, and I hope you're excited for that too. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed, and if you did, feel free to leave a like or subscribe subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you here. That's all I've got for today, so I will see you guys next time. Bye!